and technology this side of the uh, uh, responses from our candidates. I'd like to start by uh, welcoming Michael Kraft, who's a candidate for Ptarmigan Ridge Principal, and I'm just going to be facilitating with some key questions and then let him speak to those, and we'll just move on from there. So, without any further ado, uh, would you take a three to five to introduce yourself, discuss your background, qualifications, and experience, and why you would like to be the next principal at Ptarmigan Ridge? Thank you, Steve. Good evening, morning community and Ptarmigan Ridge families. Thank you so much for being here virtually or in person. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity. Like Steve said, my name is Michael Kraft. Um, all right, it's all downhill from here, right? So uh, a little bit about me. I grew up in Wenatchee, Washington. Um, I, once I graduated high school, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. So I went into the military and became a Marine. I then went to uh, Central Washington and earned my teaching certificate and became a teacher and taught upper elementary for several years at that time. I had uh, many leadership opportunities. I coached high school level sports in the Puyallup School District. And then I wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps and, and, footsteps and be an administrator. And so for the past uh, 11 years, nine of those 11 years have been at the elementary level. I've been an assistant principal in both Puyallup School District and North Thurston Public Schools. And a, a couple of highlights that I'd like to share with you is that uh, at the first school that I was at in North Thurston Public Schools, we earned a school of distinction. And that's it, it's a lot of hard work, uh, collaboration from the, and, and dedication from the staff and community. And so, uh, with that, we built that school up from the ground, started with the culture, the structure of what we were doing as far as instruction, and that led to student achievement, and we were recognized by the state for that. Uh, in addition to that, I've been able to be privileged to have experience in working with life skills programs. So for the past seven years in North Thurston Public Schools, I've worked with life skills programs, and I know that collaboration is very important between our general ed and our special ed staff as well as the mind frame in regards to inclusion and uh, least restrictive environment. I currently live in Puyallup with my family. My family consists of my fiance, Laura, my daughters, McKenna, Jaden, Avery, and my son, Cooper. Um, my leadership style is all about relationships. And I believe that I have an ability to not only engage with our uh, engage and connect with all stakeholders, and that includes you as, as parents and community, but I also have uh, a knack for connecting with kids, and I'm very kid-focused and driven. I pride myself on knowing students by name. I'd like to, for us to be focusing on community building uh, post-COVID, understanding the impacts, but also bringing our community back into the building, celebrating student success, uh, attending evening events such as math and reading nights, orchestra events, and just flat out volunteering. I think that that's important. Um, I want to build on the small town success here that you have in Horning uh, and continue that. It's, a, it's an amazing feeling uh, not being from Horning, but you get a sense of that immediately when you drive in. I want you to know as you're a building leader, I'm going to be invisible, I'm going to be visible and available to you uh, for those particular needs that pop up. I think that's important as a building leader. Um, and then I'd like to also mention that it's important for us to be a uh, school-to-home, home-to-school partnership. And what I mean by that is us working together collaboratively and with the mindset that we're doing what's best for kids. It's us supporting our PTSA and me working alongside of them to, uh, with our efforts here at Ptarmigan Ridge. And then it's us supporting our staff because um, they work really, really hard for our kids. And uh, it, it's important for us when we're partnering together, supporting them as well. Next, I'd like to talk about the safety, well-being, and academic achievement that's going to happen under my watch at Ptarmigan Ridge. Uh, students are going to have fun here. They're going to learn at high levels. Uh, they're going to believe that they can graduate. And like our mission states, we're going to prepare kids for college and career readiness. I want nothing more than to be here for a long time where we're seeing our kinder friends go all the way up through the ranks and graduating from boarding high school. Uh, what an amazing feeling to be able to see that process 
uh, grow. And in addition to that, I, I bring a lot of experience and leadership when we're talking about the other side because it's about the whole child. It's about uh, the social emotional well-being, but also behaviors. And uh, I utilize a PBIS system, and I have seven years of experience where we have uh, that reflection, that accountability, ownership, and efficacy for students. But on the flip side of that, it's rewarding kids that are doing what they're supposed to be doing each and every day for the building expectations. Thank you. Okay, well, there will probably be questions that might relate a little bit to your opening, so sure. give you the opportunity to elaborate if necessary. Um, what strengths do you bring as a principal and how will you use those strengths to support students, staff, and families at PTR? The strengths that I have are, um, it's, for me, it's, I'm, I'm a relationship guy, like I mentioned. It's about building the culture. I want a place where people want to come each and every day. Um, and that's, it's praising and recognizing efforts of our staff and our students. It's growing and retaining our teachers that we currently have. I want people to be knocking down our door to come and be a part of Tarmigan Ridge. Uh, I'm an effective communicator. And what I mean by that, that's uh, using many different platforms to engage our parents and community. Uh, using Skyward, social media, Remind, those kinds of things, because I want you to feel like you're a part of that team as well. Uh, and one of the things that I also mentioned was just that collaboration piece that needs to happen in order for us to uh, best support students that attend Ptarmigan Ridge, because that's why we're all here. And so the more that we can partner together, the more success that we're gonna have collectively as a system. Um, Good. We're managing the technology. What roles do parents? What roles do parents, guardians, and families have in school? Like I previously mentioned, uh, it's a, it's a partnership. Um, you are trusting your babies coming to school each and every day, and I can assure you that they will be safe because that's my number one priority. And, um, and not only helping them excel, but that partnership is us working together. It's communicating when, when things are happening with our students so we're aware so we can uh, greet them at the door with open arms and best support them as, as possible so they're prepared for the day. Um, it's coming in and being a part of the things that are happening at Tarmigan Ridge and so on, showing support. It's uh, the expectations with, with staff is you know, they're going to be communicating to you, and I, I think the same thing is, is reciprocated back, is, re, is communicating with them as a, as a staff and attending conferences and being a part of that uh, progress for, for your students and uh, doing what you can to support them when you come home. I know life is crazy. I have four kids of my own. And so just taking the time to, to sit down with them and read and do some of those things, having conversations with them as a family to, to ask about their day and, and what were some of the things that were going on as far as what you learned. And I think that kind of partnership and collaboration and support uh, helps the whole child. How do you believe children learn best and what will that look like at PTR? For me, I think students, I, I firmly believe that students have to feel connected to school. Uh, they have to feel safe, they have to feel welcome, and they have to feel heard. Uh, and so, one of the things that I've been able to do over the course of my career is uh, not only survey our older students, our fourth and fifth graders, to get a sense of how things are going, but having a smaller group, a, a principal advisory committee, where we're uh, talking about the initiatives that are happening at, at PTR and how we're doing with those and how to get better. And, and what I like to have with that group is, is, a, is a representation of our demographics here at PTR. Um, because they have a lot of great insight in regards to um, how things are operating, but 
right now coming off of COVID, I know that social emotional well being for kids is it's a big one. Uh, that's a lot of my job right now. It's focusing on supporting our primary students, but I know that at PTR, just like in North Thurston, we have a second step curriculum. And so with that, they take time within their day and they build community where they're bringing in culture, they're bringing in their family. And what that does is that allows students to be able to take risks and be able to be pushed academically. And I, I firmly believe that it, it's, it's led by me, it's me engaging you as a family, as, as families and community. It's, it's collaboration and sharing responsibilities to help support students, but it's also having high expectations for them. I know in this district, it's, it's a sense of culture of learning for learning, and that's believing that students can learn and learn at high levels and pushing them to be at grade level, if not, if not uh, above that. And then what are we gonna do? It's having conversations with, if, if that student is not at grade level, what are we gonna do to best support it? Um, but like I previously said, kids are gonna have fun. They're gonna enjoy learning. Um, they're gonna learn uh, as best as they possibly can with the, this amazing staff uh, that is already here doing wonderful things in, in regards to academics. Um, those are, I think, yeah. You mentioned in your response, you need to feel safe and heard. What will you do to ensure that all children feel safe, heard, and supported at PTR? I think the classroom is going to be a, a step in the right direction in regards to creating that community and uh, being able to resolve a lot of uh, things that could potentially be going on and, and working together as a, as a classroom. For me, I think it's me being visible and accessible as a principal, I'm, I'm an out of the office kind of guy. I like to connect with my students. I like to know them by name and find out interests. And, and with that relationship that I have with students, I think that breaks down a lot of barriers in regards to them coming to me and let me know what's going on. Um, I think for me and my experience, having that relationship allows students to be able to have conversations. I think it's having a system that if there are things that are going on in regards to situations, um, there's a process in, in regards to us having that student kind of share with us. So let's, for, for example, if there's any type of harassment, intimidation, and bullying, I wanna make sure that students are safe and taken care of. And sometimes they're reluctant in regards to giving me that information uh, just because of you know what could come after. But reassuring them through that process and keeping it strictly anonymous um, but just trying to help them solve that situation is it's bringing that information to me so I can investigate, follow up, and then do a restorative practice with that particular student if, and another student if that's the case. And so they're, they're allowing, this opportunity allows them to see the impact that they're having on other students, as well as giving them time to reflect and apologize, and ultimately it closes that circle uh, with that particular student in regards to some ongoing behavior potentially. Um, and I think one of the things that I just previously mentioned um, is having a principal advisory group where we're, that student body is representing all of Ptarmigan Ridge and, and getting a sense of what, what's happening out there so I can be out in front of it and help support it as best as possible. What would be your top priorities if you were selected as the next PTR principal? For me, since I, I seem to be talking a lot about relationships, but I think it's, it's all about the culture and establishing that. That would be my first year goal, is to build relationships with all stakeholders and, and do a really good job of that. I want to be able to have a system, like I said, is, is growing, uh, helping our, our teachers, our beginning teachers grow, and helping our veteran teachers um, continue to, actually continue to grow. Um, but just, just want to be here. I want an environment where we're positively praising and recognizing them for their efforts, because I think that that's super important. I want to give a sense of value and belonging to staff. Um, and, and focusing on that, I think that would be an end of the year reflection for us as a system 
do we have that at Ptarmigan Ridge as a sense of, uh, and then we're able to build on that moving forward. What will ongoing effective communication between home and school look like under your leadership? I kind of spoke a little bit to that, but uh, I, I think there's two, two parts to when we're talking about parents and community. One is that communication has to be effective, I believe, in some sort of weekly newsletter or a Monday memo that goes out to, to staff, I mean, sorry, to parents and community uh, that just kind of recognizes the week, here's, a, here's what's happening this week at Ptarmigan Ridge. It's using social media to celebrate our students. I believe that, you know, when we're talking about Facebook, that's a chance to really celebrate our students and recognize them for the great things and our staff as well. Uh, using uh, school messenger as a way to uh, send emails out, uh, phone calls, robocalls. Uh, I use Remind, which is like a text message. Those are great for uh, when we're talking about some quick hitters for the week and to just kind of get some notification out to parents. But I think it's also me engaging parents and communities with inviting them in to attend events and volunteer and be a part of our community. Um, and I know that schedules are busy and accessibility is hard for some families, but providing any and all options that we can take, such as right now virtually, um, and being able to still connect with our family so they're still um, feeling like they're a part of that team. And then, I, I'm a firm believer in, in having, if it's not the school site, uh, we're going to neutral sites and having uh, question and answer opportunities for our parents and, and community to, to, to dialogue with me, my administrative team, teachers. And then also I believe that, um, you know, if there's opportunities for us to, to visit homes and, and be able to uh, build that relationship, set aside academic set aside behavior and that, and that kind of stuff. It's just simply building that relationship so, they're, so our parents and community are feeling like they're a part of this team and they can come be a part of what we're doing at Ptarmigan Ridge. What would you say, what would you say, here we go, we're, we're back. What would you say has been your greatest professional achievement, first part? What would it be three to five years from now if you become principal at PTR? I alluded to a little bit of that uh, with that recognition of being a school of distinction. Uh, being an assistant principal for is a great accomplishment for me. I'm following in my grandfather's footsteps, it's, um, I couldn't ask for a, a, a better, I love my job. I'm enthusiastic. I bring my A game each and every day. I absolutely love what I do. And so I think I previously spoke that that um, that accomplishment in itself, and that's how I, I would probably approach uh, my principalship at, at Ptarmigan Ridge is starting with that culture and then beginning to work on that structure of student achievement. I know that there are a lot of things already happening and in place that, that teachers are working really hard on, and then I can come alongside of them and support them with their work with MTSS and using that data to be really good, not just having the data to say that, okay, so reading is an area of focus for us as a system, but drilling down and analyzing that data to say, what is it that we can do to best support all of our students uh, K-5? And uh, that includes our life skills, our special ed students, it includes everybody. Um, and so it's us growing with achievement, it's us uh, improving our social emotional well-being for kids. It's seeing um, our work uh, having an impact on students and um, as students, students are transitioning to the middle school, um, they're finding success with what they're doing at the next level. What has drawn you to the Learning School District? I was really hoping for this question. So, uh, the small town field that I previously mentioned, I, 
coming in when I went through round one, you get a, you're going by the high school, you have accolades, uh, which are something to be super proud of. Um, I went over by district office and there was a, a bus driver who I was waiting for who was picking up a student and she was enthusiastically waving at me and I was like, wow, I really like that, that's super awesome, that's personable. Um, that small town feel of, I want to be a part of the generational families that have been here. I want to be a part of uh, the new families that have moved in to Horty, uh, or that commute in. Um, I want to be a, able to walk across and go to a Friday night football game and watch Horty in high school. I brought my, my fiance and I came and drove through on Saturday night and went to Los Pinos. Great food. Um, and had a great experience. We kind of just did a tour and that whole, that feel it is amazing. And one of the things that stuck out to me when I was doing my panel interview for the first round, one of the teachers said, because I asked, I said, what's so great about Ptarmigan Ridge? What would draw me to Ptarmigan Ridge? And she said, family. And I said, I want to be a part of that family. That sounds great to me. Um, I'm just at a, a point in my life where I've been an assistant principal for 11 years. My kids are a little bit older. I'm at that, that point where I'm able to put in the time needed to help uh, our staff and students be successful. And I applied for a position, it might even have been in this position seven years ago, and I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get to this round. And I, when I was taking a walk the other day and I saw this position available, I immediately got my application in because these don't come very often. And I wanted to make sure that I was uh, doing that because I, I want to be here. Okay, you've done really well on time. And so this is the last question. And you've got about six or so minutes to, is there anything else we did not ask you that you would like to share? Anything else you'd like us to know? feel like I've got everything covered, but I mean, is there anything that anybody in the audience would like to know? No? Nope. I'm trying to think of what else I can share with you that I might not have already shared. I guess uh, some additional ways that I, because I, I think transition and connectability with kids are a couple of important uh, thoughts that might be looming out there for our parents and community. Um, the transition for me is realizing that I'm coming from uh, a current role uh, and making sure I fulfill those obligations, but I, I want to be here as soon as I possibly can, connecting with all stakeholders um, and starting that transition to get to know people. Um, I know there's only a month and a half left of school, but I think it's important for me to be seen and attend and start that transition and having conversations with the staff and finding out, you know, what is great uh, for Ptarmigan Ridge, and that is, includes our parents and community as well as our students and areas of focus that I can have as a building leader. Um, so I'm prepared to lead our work starting in August. Uh, and. Connectability for students. I have many different ways that I do this um, through uh, the, the principal advisory committee, which I mentioned. I'm a, I'm a building leader that likes to go outside and play basketball and wall ball with kids because I know that that goes a long way when we're talking about building trust um, and, and a culture where we can excel. It's me connecting with kids that have behavior goals through our PBIS tier systems of support. It's um, you know, we, I have probably a handful of kids that I check in with each, each morning and they have some goals pertaining to what they're working on and at the end of the day we're working on, you know, did we find success or not and then rewards that come with it if they, if they made it. And so there's lots of different ways. Uh, I'm the type of uh, building leader that wants to attend evening events. I'm going to put in the time and energy to, to show and see students outside of the classroom because 
Um, like I said, it's about the whole child and seeing them in those different opportunities thriving. I'm, I'm the type of principal that's also going to connect with students when they have intramural or extracurricular activities that are happening within the community um, because I think that's important as well. But I just want, um, I, I think that those are the two, two things that I'd like to share. And that's it. Appreciate your time and thanks for being here. that very much. So Debbie, for the online community, how do they access the feedback forms? There is a QR. Oh. Um, I have to note, so the for some reason on the live stream, the comment section is not showing up, so I had to put the link. For those who are watching live stream, uh, refresh your, your web page and the link to the questionnaire will be in the description area. That's Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we appreciate you sharing with us. So Michael will transition now to the staff side and we'll have our next candidate come forward. And when she comes in, we'll go ahead and go through the same process. Thank you very much.
Okay. Well, I want to say hello again and to our online community as well as our uh, families here. I'd like to introduce to you Nikki Mesa, and I'll turn the first question over to her to give us an introduction of who she is and your background, qualifications, experience, and why you'd like to be the next principal at Ptarmigan Ridge Elementary. Okay, it's on. Um, as you said, my name is Nikki Mesa. A little bit about my background. I'm currently the assistant principal at Rep. Terra Middle School. I've been there for four years, but my actual teaching experience has been all elementary. I've worked in Kent School District, which is where I started. I actually started an emotional behavioral disorder teacher in special education for K-6 students. I then was a sixth grade teacher for four years in the same school, and then I moved to be the intervention specialist where I worked with our first through sixth grade, this seems really loud, so I apologize, uh, really focusing in on the standards and response to intervention. We really focused on pulling small groups and meeting the standards where the students were, enhancing their learning, as well as providing support for differentiation. These were considered fluid groups, meaning that we moved our students based off of how they learned as frequently as they learned it, as so long as they demonstrated expectations, which we did formal, formally assess moving forward, we continued to do that. I left Kent in 2009 when I got married. I moved closer to home, and I went to Beachwood Elementary, which was on North Fort. That gave me a great experience on really the school being the community hub. Especially as families were moving in and out of the military and PCSing, we really were the connection that the community had. And that brought in the importance of really working with our community to support all of our students. I moved to Bethel in 2012, where I taught fourth grade. And then I was a tech toast, and I worked with teachers specifically on integrating technology to support our student learning. I then got an opportunity, actually, they um, they had a tragedy at one of the schools and they moved me to be an associate administrator at a high school. I will tell you, in the background of elementary, high school was very shocking. But I really enjoyed the experience because it gave me a really good view of how students start and their ultimate goal. So beginning in elementary in my background, now I'm in middle school, and now I see the progression all the way to high school and graduation. Lastly, why I want to be the Ordinary Tarmigan Principal, um, I am a K-13 senior, meaning I started in kindergarten. I graduated from Ordinary High School in 1999, which seems like forever ago. But the sense of community that I had, the friends that I developed, and the learning experiences that I built, I think is important for all of our students. Ordinary is a great community where we can wrap around our students. The school should be a community hub for everyone to come in, and it was never, growing up, I would see my teachers, my principals, at the store, at the parade, at the community events, and it really made me feel supported. And so it, to me, it feels like coming back home, being part of a community that I've grown up in, also knowing the background of the education system that I participated in. I want to make sure that our students get that same experience to feel safe, connected to the community, community and always welcomed. All right, there you go. Yeah, these are these are lit up pretty hot, so yeah, yeah you don't need to get that close. Okay, so what strengths do you bring as a principal, and how will you use those strengths to support students, staff, and families at PTR? I think one of my biggest strengths is communication. I think it's really important that we're working collectively, and so it's really important that our community, our staff, and our students are working towards a common goal. And that communication between all of us is vital for students' success. The other strength that I bring is visibility and making connections. It is so important that students see me all over the school, that I know their name, that I know who they are, and that I also know their families by name, and that it's a welcoming place for our students and our community and building that through our staff by collaboratively working towards the same goal, by making sure that everyone who walks into Tarmigan feels like they're part of Tarmigan, just like they feel like they are part of our community as Ordinary. So those 
strengths. Can you repeat the question? What strengths do you bring, and how will you use those strengths to support students, staff, and families? So those strengths um, will benefit the community and support the community and the staff by making sure that I'm always accessible that you always know what's happening, that you know that it's an open door, that you can come in and, commu and work with me, communicate, be part of the learning that's happening here for all of our students. By bringing in these strengths, we're able to work collectively and they'll see me as a resource as well as an ally in ensuring all students' success. What roles do parents, guardians, and families have in school? Well, the parents are the primary role. So they should be part of what's happening in the school across the board. They should know what's happening in the classrooms, what their students are learning, because really students begin learning before they ever step into a classroom. They're learning by the things that they see, by the community that they're in, by the activities that they participate. And so by knowing our families and the parents, it helps me to view our students. It helps me to get to know them. As a teacher, one of the activities that I always did to start the year was a million words or less. And I asked parents to tell me in a million words or less who their kid was. What do you want me to know? Because you are their number one supporter. So therefore, by knowing the insights that you have, I'm able to best serve all students and see the brightness that's in them and the way that they are learning outside of the school. I think it's so important that parents have an active role they come into the school, they're part of the PTA, they're part of just coming for the nightly activities, and that there's open communication between parents, teachers, and all staff here, especially with me. One of the things that I'll always ask parents is to provide feedback. What do you want to see? Because this is as much of your school as it is your students. And as your student's number one supporter, it's important that you have an equal voice in what we're doing. How do you believe children learn best, and what will that look like at PTR? I think children's, children learn best when they're in a safe place, where they feel like they are connected to the people around them, where it feels safe and welcoming, where they feel like they can take risks and try new things. So in order to provide a safe place, it really is building relationships. It's building relationships with our students, it's building relationships with our staff, and it's building relationships with our community. It's important that when they walk in the door, they know that this is a place where they're wanted, where they're seen, and where they're heard. By doing that, we're able to create learning activities based off of their own interest and connect the learning to the things that they know and build on those things in order to provide new learning experiences for them. So I think it's important that we are, again, working collectively and that we build those strong relationships with our students, staff, and community. Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, we dovetail this. So the next question is actually, um, what will you do to ensure that all students feel safe, heard, and supported at PTR? And as I mentioned, I think the biggest thing is that we build relationships. What are the students' interests? How are we receiving them and how are they receiving us? By making sure that we're using kind words, we're uh, teaching expectations of what it looks like to be a student. So students know the consistency of what's expected so that they can be successful. One of the things that research does show is consistency is key for kids. If they know what to expect, they're going to excel. And so it's really important that collectively we build those expectations and those systems within our school to ensure that all students are, understand the consistency, but it also so that they feel safe walking in. They know what to expect for breakfast. They know what their first topic is going to be. They know how to get a pencil, the things that they need in order to be successful. And that they feel welcomed and welcomed by all staff members as soon as they enter so that they know that this is a safe place for them to be when they're having a bad day. We all have bad days. So it's not just when you're 
doing great things, but also when you're struggling, they know that they have the support here to ensure that we move through that in order to ensure that there's success. They also need to know that they're loved and that our goal is their primary success. So setting that up through our culture, through what we do here, and really building that with the community is important to fully support our students. What would be your top priorities if you were selected as the next principal at PTR? I think the top priority is getting to know our staff and our students and really looking at where are our strengths, where are our celebrations, also where are areas of improvement and that comes from those that are here and that are working. The other top priority is to get to know our community in order to have, make sure that I have open communication frequently, that you get to know me, that we collectively set some of those goals and those visions and you know how we're getting there, and that our students and staff know how we're getting there as well. Can you repeat the question one more time? What would be your top priorities if you were selected as the next principal of PTR? So again, was getting to our staff and our students. This is keeping us on our toes. This is keeping us on our toes, isn't it? Yeah. What will ongoing effective communication between home and school look like under your leadership? I think it's important that we have um, weekly newsletters. So that, that goes out to the community so that they know what's happening. It also is important that we provide opportunities for the community to provide feedback on what's happening. I also truly believe in an open door policy. Just like your students are welcomed here and we want them to feel welcomed, we want families to feel welcomed at all times as well. And so coming in and just saying, hey, can I meet with you? I think is really important. I think open communication when there's positives that we want to share or concerns that we want to share is vital to the overall success of the school and our students. So I promote families coming in, engaging in conversations, meeting with myself, meeting with teachers, and really being part of what we want to see as Tarmigan continues to grow and the community continues to grow, that we work collectively to ensure that we all have a voice. That's why I will say I really enjoyed this process. I've never been in a school where they've done both staff and community uh, interviews for the candidates, but I think it's so important that we are working collectively and so that we all get our voices heard for everyone. Okay, a two-parter. What would you say has been your greatest professional achievement and what would it be three to five years from now if you become principal at PTR? I think my greatest professional achievement is really connecting with kids and our staff. Um, when I moved to Frontier, it was really important that I worked on their discipline policy and philosophies and implementing programs to really support our students by teaching expectations, by building relationships with our staff in order to build relationships with our students and having clear and consistent procedures in place to support all people. But most importantly, it was really the connections that I have with all of us, our students and our staff. It's more than just a collegial connection, it really is a personal. I really care about our staff, I really care about our students, and I make those relationships very known, and I care about the families that they come from. Um, during COVID, obviously we, we work together, so it was really important that I was in constant communication with our students. It was really important that I was in constant communication with our families. And so opening that door up made it even easier as we returned because those relationships were built in order to collectively work towards getting us back to a sense of community. And so really making sure that I know those the people that I work with and I serve. Because my job really is to serve our students and to serve our staff and our communities. So by building those relationships, is probably my greatest uh, achievement. And I would say that throughout my career, that has definitely been one of my strengths. 
for bringing that to term. Oops, are we? Okay. Um, I think. Okay, here. We, it's going. Oh, it's. Okay. Oh, okay. See, he's the one who told me to make sure. Okay. Um, and three to five years from now, I think it will still be the same. I think um, it's really important that we all have relationships with one another in order to provide a successful environment for all of our students. So to build that, I need to make sure that I get to know all staff and model that, and that we have time to work with our families, build those relationships, be seen in the community. Supporting our students outside of school is so important. They play sports, they participate in plays, they do things outside of this building, and I think it's really important to build that support and attend those things so that they see us as someone who's really invested in their future, because we are. And so three to five years from now, I'd really like to see Termigan really be in that community hub, community involvement, really working collectively that we all have the same goals in place, and coming into Orton where I actually grew up, that was the environment I had. My mom actually worked at the local jackpot as I was growing up, and so there was not a single person that did not know what I was doing. Therefore, there was not a single person that I, that, my parents didn't know what I was doing because everybody was coming to tell. But that showed a sense of community that they were all looking out for my best interest and my growth. And I think it's important that our students see that as well. And I think that's what's also really great about being here in Orty. You must have anticipated the last question because you've already started, so I'll let you elaborate. What has drawn you to the Orty School District? So, I'm going to repeat myself again. I'm from Ordy. <laughs> my family is still in Ordy. Some of my best friends that I grew up with are still in Ordy, and I still have a strong connection to this place. Um, like I said, I'm a K-13 senior. When I went off to school, I actually student taught in Ordy in second grade uh, under Linda Rooks Road. And then I left, I got an opportunity to be in Kent, and then I kind of traveled throughout my career. But I will say, once this position opened, I was elated. Just at the possibility of coming back to a place that holds my home in my heart. I want to provide students that connection, that place of safety, that place of home, while also providing them with learning opportunities that are unique and of interest. Uh, when I did the first interview, I was in the middle school. I found my locker first because that was my locker. I knew that I was interviewing in the old music room. I knew where choir was. There's just such a sense of belonging that draws me back to Orty because it is my home. My parents are here, like I said, my best friends are here. But it also shaped my character and who I am. It also made it so that, um, made it so that I was a fantastic teacher. I learned from some of the best. And so I hope that we continue to grow in that way. I continue to grow, so regardless of the outcome, I couldn't be happier just to be standing here with you and having the opportunity to talk about Orty. Okay, last question. Is there anything else we did not ask you you'd like to share? This is your chance to wrap up and give us any of your final thoughts you'd like us to walk away. I think I just did that by talking about how great Orton is. But some final thoughts. Um, I've been in education for 17 years. I'm very blessed with the experiences that I've had. But first and foremost, I am a teacher. And I continue to grow and I continue to learn. And with every student, there's new opportunities. And so again, I'm just grateful to be in front of you, but I'm really looking for a new opportunity to continue to grow myself, both professionally and as a person. And so I am just, again, very grateful for your time and for you taking the time to come out and be with me. So we just want to thank you for coming tonight and give you the opportunity to give us some feedback, the sheets that you have with you. If you'd like to 
give us some feedback on both candidates and leave it. We appreciate that. The online community, you have that uh, link that you can attach and also give us feedback there. So thank you for your time this evening and have a good evening. Reminder for the <laughs> reminder for our virtual viewers. Um, if you need to refresh your uh, window to provide yeah, feedback you know? on the candidates, and you will find the link in the description section. Thanks, and have a good evening.